You seem troubled, friend. Deeply troubled. You pray with your eyes closed. I beg your pardon? You have a lot to lose, brother. I could have walked past you through that door entirely unobserved. Who are you? Egret. Sir. Yes. Lock up, and in future remember. Sir. Pray with one eye open. been expecting you for the past week, Colonel. Don't use rank. Just remember that I have it. I was uh, detained by the SIS. How did you escape? I simply walked out on them, as they meant me to. It's taken me a week to shake them off my tracks. Our communications are the efficient. Oh, as well as can be expected with such a low power transmitter, the range is very limited and the trawler can only read us at specified times. Out of darkness? They risk an inshore run on certain days. Mm, the risk indeed if they were picked up by a fishery cruiser. It would find a powerful transmitter, no more. The trawler is simply a relay station to Moscow. Mm. How long before you reckon they detect this transmitter here? Well, my transmissions are staggered and brief. It could take them weeks. We might need weeks. Satisfactory. Report. Our cover has been established for the past six months. We are known in the district as brother and sister. Yes, I don't want I background. Don't... What progress have you made? We are almost at the point of contact. Good. Encode a message. I want it relayed as soon as possible. Eight groaning days. Orbiting this miserable manner and what's been achieved. A queue for television licenses at the post office. We're lucky to have found the district, Mr. Mears. He's nippy with the key, this lad. Very nippy. Yes, you said that. Nippy. Well, count your blessings, then. A five-second burst isn't much to get a fix on. You said that, too. What time does the relief take over? Shh. Hold it, Jack. Hold it. Hold it, Jack. Four degrees west. Where does that take us? No way, there isn't a left turn for a quarter of a mile. D1 to D2, do you read me? Over. Did you get a bearing, Fred? No? Yeah, very nippy. Well, tough lap. Sorry, Mr. Mears, we've managed to narrow the circle a bit, but that's all. By how much? That is a lot of help. Still, we now have another message. Very interesting. But entirely unilluminating since I cannot read Morse. 
wouldn't be much good if you did, so it's in code. But from the general atmosphere of clawing smugness, I would infer the code has been broken. Correct. The experts have excelled themselves this time. You see, we can't locate their transmission source. They don't send every day, and when they do, it's in short bursts, and we can't get a fix. Which is why we need your assistance. Gladly. With the Home Office. Now to the question. Well, I think so. Perhaps when you've heard what we've got to say... No, you know, definitely not. This section operates on its own. I decline to involve any government department. Let me translate the message for you. Egret safe in nest. Osprey still in cage. Contact being arranged. Very ornithological. We know that Egret is one of the several code names used by Richmond. Richmond? Hunter, this section will locate that transmitter and pick him up. I did say, sir, we didn't have very much time. And with Richmond running around loose, we can't afford to waste any. Now, there is another name on that tape. Osprey? Yes. Otherwise known as Flo Mayhew, otherwise Svetlana Suryakin, KGB, Major. I see. And you think that she might know where Richmond would have gone? Up to this time, it's about the only thing of value she does know. And I think she would tell us, under pressure. It's a nice hunter. Repercussions. Psychological pressure. What assistance do you require? Well, the bird is in the cage. It's all right. So she says when Charlie gets out of the scrub, she'll maybe get him to face up to his responsibilities. So joking, like, I says maybe she could get him transferred here because I could use a touch of the conjugals. She didn't laugh, though. She's got no sense of humour, Miss Downs. It took it dead serious. Oh, she sounds quite a formidable lady, your Miss Dassett. Here, you do that end. Ta. Here, you should have a chat with her sometime, Flo. About what? Hard to say now that you mention it. I mean, you wouldn't be interested in religion being even. What part of Russia are you from? Chelmsford. Go on, that's down Essex. I know you're a Russian because you got done for spying. It's all a terrible mistake, Gladys. Is that what you told them? I didn't tell them anything. Best why. Thank God I'm coming up for remission soon. Miss Dansett said she'd put in a word. She's all right, you know. Not a great one for the pleasures of the flesh, but good for the old bar of chocolate. <laughs> Ask her for a lipstick, will you? I've got a lipstick, Flo. Yes. Not in my shade. Oh, see what I can do. It comes Watch Cassidy. Finished, Jeff Mayhew? Yes, almost. Then leave it for now. You've got a visitor. How pleasant to receive a gentleman caller. Thanks for the adjective. But you don't know me well enough to use it. I'm prepared to make charitable assumptions. Yes, you've got plenty of time to make them. I don't think I'll be here that long. You're still living in hope. We always get our people back. No, I remember you saying that to me some time ago. Yes. Now, what's the purpose of this visit you've just come to gloat? Oh, let's just say I'm passing through the district. Let's not. Doesn't sound too convincing. That's funny. That's what somebody said to a mate of mine quite recently. Who said? Some mates of yours. They thought he shouldn't have been in the district at all. Which district? The wrong side of the Brandenburg Gate. Sad story. It could have a happy ending for all concerned. I'm glad to hear it. Well, don't get overjoyed. Because it's not settled. Not fixed yet. But if and when it is, it could happen quite quickly. Quicker than, um, 14 years? Oh, yes. Yes, far quicker. Well, I'm glad you told me. It'll save me the trouble of working out my remission for good behaviour. Oh, no, that's just the point. Bad behaviour might be more productive. Yes, a completely new wardrobe, Liz. Latest hours, of course. I want, uh, well, if not uh, haute couture, at least clothes that give an impression of the good life. Yes, sir. Two coats, one trouser suit, three day dresses, shoes, and? 
Mm, that's a lot, that's a lot. Not quite a lot, sir. Yeah? Oh, yes, of course. Well, uh, use your initiative, Liz. I'm prepared to authorise expenditure of up to a uh, hundred pounds. That won't go very far. Something wrong? That would scarcely pay for the initiative, sir. Yeah, I see. Well, uh, whatever you think, just don't bankrupt the firm. Hmm? Now, David, how is the lady? Keen. Try not to show it, but she's keen. You feel no compunction about this operation? Mm. About Flo Mayhew? Oh, yeah. About as much compunction as she showed when she tried to knock me off. The refuse disposal trucks are supervised and thoroughly checked before they leave. Mm. I thought they might be. Did you find out about the kitchen? The major items are serviced by the manufacturers. The mechanics park their van just here. Hmm, and that is a possibility. Mm. It'll have to be a daylight operation. How does that bother you? Can you jump the police wavelength? Very easily. Then it doesn't bother me. How often do the mechanics make their inspection? As a routine servicing every six weeks. Unless something goes wrong in the interim. Something has to go wrong. She should be able to manage that. Yes. That. A lot of criticism. Well, she's in there because she bungled a job. But I agree she should be able to contrive something. We're on a course together which covered my sabotage. Basic mechanical and electronic principles. Not, I would guess, her favorite subjects. How does she cope? With efficiency, but no enthusiasm. Oh. That ladder will be more attuned of a course in haute cuisine. Mm -hmm. What's it taste like that? Poor quality distemper. And cigarette ash. Sorry, Phil. Hey, watch it. Still rabbiting. You can see I'm going to have to separate you two. Deliberate, Mayhew. No, no, no. Honestly, it wasn't. I was aiming for your face. What did you say? Ooh. Oh, my God! Where is he? Sleeping. Wake him. I'm awake. Well, did you make contact? No, and I won't for the next fortnight. Why not? She's in solitary confinement. I was suffering from a crisis of identity. Mr. Kellen, that's, uh, that's the one, that's the, that, that spy. Drive the taxi. Oh, you took me for a ride muck, didn't you? You were just playing me along. Well, what you've got to say for yourself now, cat got you a tongue. Drive the bloody taxi. You fancied yourself, didn't you, as a right little Matahari. You was trying to get at my friend through me. You know, there's no saying what lengths you'd have gone to. 
chance would be a fine thing, Lonely. Well, as far as I'm concerned... Lonely! I oh, know, drive a taxi. <laughs> I was uh, reading in a magazine that the stylish woman simply doesn't wear handcuffs this season. She does, if you don't want her to make a quick sprint to her embassy. With an exchange in the offering, that would seem rather pointless. We want to make sure that we've got something to exchange. For who? Burroughs. Edward Burroughs? Hmm, we caught a big one. How long to settle the details? A few days. Elaborate, I must say. Why did I have to skin my knuckles on the prison officer? We want you handy for a, a quick switch. We don't want you all lot to know how keen we are. That's reasonable. Um, where to now? Mayfair. Small hotel. We've got a pad there. Ah, yes, I remember. So do I. I think that's everything, David. Okay, Liz. Off you go. That's just what I'd have picked myself. You have excellent taste. <laughs> Thank you. We have your measurements on file, of course, but I made a few uh, adjustments. Eight months of prison food. Oh, intelligence, too. <laughs> your bath is ready. Oh, thank you. Good night. Good night. Night, Liz. No. everything to your satisfaction? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's just well, one small complaint. The uh, windows won't open. That's right. And the glass won't break either. Which is just as well. Because if it did, the alarm bell would wake the district. Ah, what a very secure house. Thank you. Is it on your list? Obviously. I phoned you here. When you try to lure me into an ambush. Let's not discuss unpleasantries. Um, where do you live? Across the corridor. Oh, you're my neighbour. Me or somebody like me. 24-hour watch. And the door stays locked? Mm-hmm. At all times. Oh, a telephone. <laughs> do you know it's the little things you miss most? Things you take for granted. I shouldn't take you for granted you'll be finding any friends, because every call goes straight through to my room. And I have no friends there? Anything you want. Any time. All you have to do is call me. The number is 212. Anything, any time. How does it feel to be freed, Alice? Well, the first couple of days took a bit of getting used to. But it's better than being in, I'll tell you. I'm ever so grateful, Miss Downs. I don't know how to thank you. By leading a useful Christian life. But it's not really me you have to thank. Then who? You, Mr... Oh, let's just say that I'm not unknown to the authorities. Oh, are you a prison visitor and all? I have visited, yes. When Miss Stars had told me of your history, I felt there were good grounds for taking an interest in your case. It's so easy for a young girl to be led astray. Yeah, and that's just what happened, wasn't it? Rather frequently. How many offences were taken into consideration? Um, three. Only three? Oh, but there were four, surely. Yeah, but I didn't let on about that. I mean, well, I only mentioned it to you because I felt like telling somebody. The impulse to confess is a strong one. Miss Dussett, I think that Gladys has paid her debt to society. Yes. 
But her young man hasn't. And he was involved. Here, you wouldn't shot Charlie, would you? God, he's killed me. Oh, don't, Miss Downsy, please. With his record, he'd go out for a straight fight. Don't be alarmed, Dallas. Come, come. Miss Dowsett, I think we could consider it water under the bridge. Well, I'm not sure. Quite apart from having it on my conscience, I feel the police should. I do appreciate your position, but couldn't you make some small sacrifice of conscience in the interest of rehabilitation? Hmm. It really does depend upon Gladys's future conduct. Oh, I'll be a plaster saint. Honest, I will. I don't want to go back to prison. Of course you don't, my dear. Stay well clear of it. Well, apart from the odd visit. Visit? You're joking. I don't think it was intended as a joke, Gladys. The fortunate do have an obligation to the unfortunate. Wouldn't you like to help Miss Dossard in her work? Unofficially, of course. Yeah. But I'm not allowed to visit my friends inside. Besides, I don't know anyone to visit. Ah. Oh, what about the unfortunate woman who shared your cell? Flo Mayu? Oh, she's all right. I mean, we didn't have much in common with her being a Russian, though she wouldn't admit it, but she's all right. Tell me about her. Is she well? She's all right. My dear, it isn't possible to be all right, as you put it, outside of a state of grace. I had hoped that we might help her to find it. Oh, you won't get much change out of Flo. The Padre had a couple of goes and a very crestfallen he looked. Gladys, it seems to me that your information hasn't gone very deep. Oh, I'll be glad to help, honest. I mean, I'd visit her if I could, but she ain't there. I'm aware that she's in solitary confinement, but that is only temporary. But it's not. I mean, we all thought she'd been sent to the strip. That's what we thought, but she couldn't have been. Explain. Well, I used to dish up the grub for them on punishment. Wouldn't feed a sparrow, but they never starved them. And nothing was being sent down when I left. You certain? Of course I'm certain. Mind you, she could be on hunger strike. Perhaps she's gone off her chump. Or perhaps it was something to do with that fella. Who? The fella what come to visit her. You know, our file photographs don't really do justice. Three quarters right's your best profile. I remember that for next time I'm captured. <laughs> Is there much in my file? Ooh, about four thousand words. Mine? Eight closely typed fool's cap pages. Well, what's that? That's um. It's a fisherman's story. You don't have that much on me. Hmm. <laughs> Florence Mayhew, alias Svetlana Suryakin. Born Singapore, 1900 and, uh, of Russian emigre parents. Education, boarding school, Chelmsford. I believe I told you that. Went to the Soviet Union, 1951, recruited KGB September 1959. You didn't tell us that. Oh, clever little you. Yeah. Hm. Has it occurred to you, we probably know more about each other than most married couples. Yeah. Well, not everything goes down in the file, does it? At least not the way it really is. No. <laughs> you know, I'm really looking forward to going home. Oh, yeah? Got somebody waiting, have you? Mm, my daughter. Your daughter? Irena. Ship at 12 soon. A slip. That wasn't in the file, was it? Dead right. We didn't even know you were married. <laughs> well, I'm not. I see. Well, it can happen even to people like us. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't look so shocked. I'm not looking shocked. Oh. Surprise, they saw. Surprise, we didn't have it. Well, don't bother adding it to the fire. I don't know, it might come in useful. Do you think so? I think. I think you'll be operational ten minutes after you get back. That's what I think. Well, you're wrong. I can tear up the fire. Your liquidation was to be my last assignment. <laughs> and you blew it. Mm. Unofficially, and I wouldn't like this to get back. But I'm not too sorry I did. Do you believe that? Look, if I could believe the KGB could pension off a highly trained agent for no reason at all, darling, I could believe anything. Well, I'm leaving at my own request, and there is a reason. Oh, yeah? What's that? I have influential friends. Well, look at the facts. Assaulting a prison officer is hardly what you'd expect from a trained operative. 
Discipline can break down under provocation. Well, there wasn't a provocation. I did make discreet inquiries. It seems that Svetlana almost wrecked the prison kitchens before they got her under control. It took three wardresses to hold her down. And she hasn't entirely forgotten her training. I remind you of how serious this is. I remind you of our respective ranks. Well, since Svetlana must have been aware of the consequences, it follows that she wished to be placed in solitary confinement for her own reasons. And since she has been removed, it also follows that those reasons were shared by others. Such an inexorable logic. The SIS? Probably. An assumption of doubt. Which raises the question, why is a KGB agent cooperating with the SIS? No reason comes to mind. You seem to be avoiding the obvious conclusions. Assumptions on conclusions. How well do you know, Svetlana? We trained together on a special course. We've had operational contact from time to time. You dislike her? Personalities hardly enter into it. I have made my assessment from a purely objective and professional standpoint. I'm sure. She struck me as being frivolous and superficial. Soft. Yes, that's Svetlana. Soft. Like a marshmallow. Quite. With a ball bearing inside it. Tried biting one sometime. I detected no strength of character, only an absence of dedication. And the presence of beauty? I really must object to this suggestion that I have some personal dislike of our comrade. Objection noted. Anything else? Yes. She was about to leave the organization. How do you know? It was considered relevant information. You consider it relevant? Well, an agent on her last assignment gets captured and sentenced to 14 years. A woman like that. Oh, I can just guess the psychological effect it would have upon her. It's possible she may have bought her freedom. Svetlana wouldn't defect. Moscow might think otherwise. Our suspicions should certainly be reported. It would be premature to report our suspicions as they consist mainly of your prejudices. I am aware of your own. Do I detect a note of insubordination? None was intended. But I must say this. That if I thought for one moment that a superior was being derelict in his duty for whatever reason, then no consideration would deflect me from mine. Admirable. If she's been removed from prison, it could help us a great deal. I want a watch kept on all the known safe houses in London. Yes, David, excursions. Blue sky, green leaves, fresh air. All part of the conditioning. You'll take precautions, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. You say she knows nothing of value? Nothing of value to the KGB, but I imagine she could uh, supply us with a fair amount of current information. Current, yeah. Be out of date, what? Two years? Or less. Why? She's doing 14. She's an agent. Oh, come on, she's a woman. 14 years, it'll break her. I think she'll break a lot sooner than that, without hope. I read the psychiatrist's report very thoroughly before I put this project in hand. I bet you did. Well, you were as keen on the idea as I was. I'm still keen on the idea I wanted to work. Of course I do, but once it's worked, she's no more use to us. Oh, come on, I was just thinking, you know, lop a bit off her sentence. Cut it in half, say. We're not a parole board, David. And even if I had the authority, we wouldn't be doing her any favours, would we? You ever heard of the thin red line? They sorted your lot out at Balaclava. How ah, sweet. Got one there from the night brigade. <laughs> Don't be petty. <laughs> I suppose, in a way, we're soldiers too. Do you suppose? Say, in a hundred years' time, people might be doing the same sort of thing with little model spies, you know, collecting them and painting them up. Well, you're doing a pretty good job of painting one right now. Yeah. Wow. All dressed up and nowhere to go. Getting impatient? Well, I've been cooped up here for eight days. At least in the last place they let me out for exercise. Fancy a jaunt? Are you kidding? No. How about the fast sprint to the embassy? How are you recruiting, Karen? Hmm? And don't say it just happened. Because you must have made a decision at some point. Oh, I make lots of decisions. The only trouble is nobody takes a blind bit of notice. <laughs> no, no, let's just say that I wanted to do my bit for freedom 
and the West. And Mom's apple pie. Show sure enough. <laughs> now, people like us, you and me, are we really committed to any cause? Or do we just do what comes naturally and enjoy the game? What was your reason? Well, if I were honest, I might admit that the danger and the excitement tell some appeal. Yes. And, of course, it is much better than digging spuds on some collective farm, isn't it? You have a simple view of the socialist revolution. Yes, well, I've seen it at close hand. I wasn't struck. And does everything on your patch leave you speechless with admiration? I mean, no. You know, it's funny. I had a conversation exactly like this quite recently with a fella. We didn't persuade each other either. I wasn't trying to. I was just thinking that people like us probably have more in common with each other than we do with the people we work for. Well, professionals usually do. Well, I'll be out of it soon. Come on, let's go. Impatient to get out, impatient to get back. Quite a girl, aren't you? Well, there might be some news. Yes, there might be. If I said that I hoped we might never meet again after this, would you accept it as a kindly thought? Shouldn't we wait till he gets back? And when will that be? He's been gone two days. Code it and send it as soon as the trawler's in range. Well, it's long. Longer than anything I've said before. We are facing an emergency. been on the air for four minutes. Four degrees west. Take the next turn on the left. Steady. Steady. Got it. Got it. Uh, D1 to D2. Do you read me? Over. Yeah, did you get that, Fred? No. Ah, it's a pity. Well, never mind, Fred. Could happen to anybody. Precisely what could happen to anyone that consistently seems to happen to Fred? His gear's gone on the blink. Gremlins. Gremlins. I suppose if I asked you to elucidate, you'd say his high-resistance brow tabs jumped up his oscillating tweeter meter for bloody minutes. All right, mate, we got something. Old Nippy Fingers is located somewhere along that line. No, Miss Mayor, you don't quite understand. I'm afraid the news is rather distressing. That's what I call typical British understatement. Oh, and please don't make it more difficult. Make what more difficult? And despite the most strenuous efforts on our part, I must inform you that a situation has arisen which precludes any possibility of you being returned to the Soviet Union. Cullen, what's he saying? There's, there's been a setback. No, the difficulties of rather more permanent nature. You see, in the course of events, our colleagues in the CIA were informed of the impending exchange and reacted with uh, asperity. In short, they feel it's simply not on. So you started taking orders from the Americans? It would be more accurate to say that we see their point of view. You wouldn't wish to cause a breach with our NATO allies, would you? <laughs> well, yes, perhaps you would, but we wouldn't. You were in Connecticut last year. No. CIA insists that you were. And furthermore, they say that you were part of an espionage network in that state. One which succeeded in penetrating Project Dolphin. I've never even heard of it. You know, they are convinced, Miss Mayo, that not only have you heard of it, but that you know far too much about it. We share that conviction. 
But I deny it absolutely. Yes, of course you would, wouldn't you? Sadly, the information you're said to possess is of such a long-term nature that any possibility of exchanging you now, or indeed in the future, must be ruled out completely. What happens to me? You will complete the remainder of your sentence. Just when you go back, there are certain arrangements to be made. You will be informed. Isn't she supposed to be in solitary for another two days? Yes, I see no reason why she shouldn't spend them in the comfort of these surroundings. Naturally, the excursions will be discontinued. Yes. I'm not quite sure whether it's proper for me to express such an opinion. But I must say that your bearing, in the face of this bitter disappointment, can only compel admiration. I'll have 14 years to practice it. Good day, Miss May. Miss Mayhew. Don't say a word, just don't say a word. So we don't always get them back. <laughs> when was the message sent? Four hours ago. I was ordered to contact the trawler. It will be out of range. Raise them. Colonel, I must formally protest. Protest to the court martial. You went against my express orders. Major, I shall personally see to it that you are recalled and disciplined for this gross act of insubordination. It was justified by circumstances. What circumstances? Your absence. And this. Do you recognize the woman? Yes. And I also recognize the man. Sir, the trawl is out of range. I can't risk a longer signal. They've acknowledged. No. We can read them, but they can't read us. It's a message from Moscow, sir. <laughs> Look, Alan, I, I swear to you, I've never been near Connecticut, and I've never heard of this dolphin project. Oh, for God's sake, help me. Fourteen years. <laughs> calm down, girl, calm down. I've been thinking about this. There could be a way. Defect. Trade. Nothing to trade with. You have, at least I think you have. Richmond is back in this country. Richmond? I don't know the name. Yes, you bloody do! Don't try to make a fool of me, darling! You were on Richmond's team. We want him, you can get him. Well, supposing, just supposing I could help you. How long do you think I'd live if the KGB even suspected... No, well, that's the point. You see, you've missed it. The KGB not even got a suspect. They've got a no. No? You can't be exchanged. You've found out too much. I haven't! We think you have, and that's the same thing. Now, if you're exchanged, that's the quickest way for the KGB to get the information. But you shot Richmond. And we'll help you spend the rest of your life keeping clear of them. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Raina, my daughter's in Russia. Do you think she'll recognize you in 1986? You really think something could be worked out? I know you're trying to help me, Callan, but do you really think so? Well, it's worth a try, and it's worth a try. Force papers, money, new start. Anyway, whatever the deal, we'll guarantee you freedom and a head start. I don't know. I just don't know. Look, well, why don't you go in there in the bathroom, wash your face, think about it. I'll take some soundings. Oh, that's something. One more fix. 
When the lines intersect, that's it. The message was much longer this time. Mm. The reply was much shorter. Yes. Oh, good. Good. Well done, David. No, I think we'd better have her back here. I'll send Mears to assist. Right. He thinks the lady is ready to talk business. Do you know what I think this means, sir? What I think it means. Have you informed Callan, sir? No, no. Neither necessary nor expedient. Well, then, of course, I shan't either, sir. I applaud your reticence. Don't applaud, sir. That way your left hand would know what your right hand was doing. Hello? Hello? Flo? Oh, I yell, Flo. Come on. Come on. All right, come on. Come on, you're all right. Come on. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to leave you. Come on. Up you get. Come on. Help yourself. Go on. That's it. I'm sorry, Callan. I truly am. How much longer? At least an hour. An hour? Every minute will put at greater risk. Sir, with respect, you have your orders from Moscow. As you have from me. What if she's told them about this place? Then it becomes imperative that the frequency is closed down. Is there another reason why you wanted us to stay on the air? What other? An appeal to Moscow, perhaps. The trawler must be told that this station is dead. It only takes one of us to do that. Is that you? Oh, <clears throat> she took the key. Yes. Yeah. And you lost your gun. Again. Yes. <clears throat> Why didn't you, um, get it back? Well, I didn't get the chance, did I? Or you, you didn't make the chance? Didn't do it on purpose, did I? Perhaps subconsciously. Oh, that's what you think, is it? it it's what Hunter might think. Yeah. Well, he'll never bloody well know now, will he? <laughs> why, why, why didn't she just shoot you? I don't know, Toby. I did not ask her. Yeah. I, uh, I don't think you ever will. T Toby? Toby! I'll send somebody back with some boat, boat cutters. cutters. Yeah. I wasn't released from prison. You were removed and placed in an SIS safe house. Yes, a secure house. Barred windows, bolted doors, alarm bells. Why? To stop me from getting out. To stop us from getting in. Well, yes, if you like. But they weren't taking any chances until the exchange had been completed. What exchange? Well, for Burrows. Edward Burrows? Yes. Well, 
Burroughs was shot crossing the wall three months ago. Well, look, I'm telling you the truth. The truth is that 14 years in prison is an insupportable thought for a woman such That's as you. That's enough. Svetlana, did you defect? No. And I say yes. You agreed to betray us in return for your freedom. Look, it was suggested, but I made no arrangement. Svetlana, I wish to speak with you privately. I must insist upon being present. Take the car round to the back and carry out your other instructions. My instructions? Are to close down the station. But the trawler won't be on listening or... Try to raise them. They must be told to stay off this frequency. Hold it, Cat. Bingo. Oh, Kara, you must see it. I've been tricked, I admit it. Obviously, there'll have to be an inquiry, but I'm certain I can convince our superiors. There'll be no inquiry, no court-martial. Why not? Because I doubt if you could explain this. Ah, uh, Callum. If only you had waited. I was sent on this mission with express orders, the first to secure your release from prison and get you safely back to Russia. Well, I'm released. The arrangements have barely progressed. It would take days, even weeks, to get you out. Well, I can wait. I can't. What do you mean? Your recovery was my first objective. If that proved impossible, then I was to use my best judgment as to whether or not you constituted a danger to the KGB. And if I did? The danger was to be eliminated. And what is your best judgment? The point is academic. Moscow has intervened. There was a message. The Osprey must go. I see. I haven't defected. But I won't plead. Kirill? Yes? Even in death, a woman's entitled to some vanity. Irena. We'll be well cared for. You promise? She's my daughter, too. Sorry, Flo. Really, I am. to tell him, Dad. Did you get Richmond? 